Hello and welcome back to episode 5 of the Electric MX-5 build. On this episode we're going to rebuild the subframes, get all the arms fitted back to them and get them mounted back in the car. I'm going to go and see Josh and see how he's getting on with the battery boxes and hopefully we can finally get design sent off the cage laser to be produced. EBC have sponsored us a set of disc pads and lines so we'll get them fitted and I'm going to do a tech talk on battery options. So relevant different lithium on batteries that are on the market that you can buy for your conversion. So as normal, keep watching, hit the subscribe button and let's go. When I got the arms fitted back to the subframes, I've managed to get some help in the form of Nick, my younger brother for today, which I'm gonna leave to probably put all these together. No? You want some help, do you? But alright, let's crack on and get this done then. Let's go. So before Chris can fit the rear subframe in the car, I'll have to go ahead and wire up the DC-DC, the charger plate um, and the fuse box, and then we'll pop this up into the car. Now Josh has built the charger and DC DC plate, let's have a quick look at the wiring. So we have a charger here and we have our positive and negative high voltage cable and our data connector which loops back round. Data connector goes off to the front of the car. The high voltage positive and negative goes into this small box here. So within here Josh has mounted three small fuses. Um, so we've basically got a dual fuse for the charger to allow us to get up to the 46 amps required because the fuse holders we've used have a maximum of 30 amps, so we've just doubled them up parallel. We've done a single fuse for the DC to DC. And as you can see, the DC to DC positive and negative lines link round and into here. It has a positive for the 12 volt system output here and a negative here, which is going to link through to the original battery. We've also got earth linkage. Um, for the DC to DC to the charger to tie everything together and our data connector coming out which is our 12 volt activation we spoke about before. We then have I think just over three meter long 35 mil cable going to the front uh, and just say I suppose the charger cable is 16 mil the DC to DC cable is 6 mil. Now we've gone through the wire and let's go and get this and the subframes fit to the car. So it's now time to get our EBC brakes fitted. Um, we've got disc pads and we've got lines on the way from EBC. We've gone with the yellow stuff pads, which is fast road and occasional track use. But they do offer other pad options if you need it. And we've gone with the grooved brakes, nice and black at the moment, but they won't stay like that for long. Now before I get these fit to the car, let's head up and see Josh, because he's finished the CAD design for the battery pack. Okay, so I've just finished the battery box design for the MX-5. Um, so the next stage will be to get this sent over to Cage Laser so they can fabricate and uh, powder coat this all so we can get it back and get it built up. Um, so if we just take a quick look inside and you can see how everything's packaged. Um, so if I just turn the lid off for you guys and the stainless trim panel. 
Um, so you can see here, we've actually got a um, steel, it's an interface panel, which basically will allow us to mount the BMS, or the contactors and the pre-charged circuit. Just keeps everything inside the box, so it's all watertight, so there's no chance of water ingress from the outside world. Um, the box itself is only gonna have the two HV connectors on the back and the BMS plug. Um, and two coolant lines coming out of the box. Everything is, is neatly packaged and nicely contained within the box. So Josh, can we now take a look at the side of the battery box uh, with the scan off so we can just show everyone how the contacts are laid out, the BMS and then where your high voltage inputs and outputs are? Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, so here you've got the high voltage connector at the back, of the, the two high voltage connectors at the back of the box. So you've got one here um, that's gonna be going to the motor and the other one's going to be going to the back of the car to the charger and then you've got the BMS wiring plug here as well um, so you've got the two HV cables going to each of the contactors you've got 400 amp fuse um, that's going to be on the negative contactor which then on the other side goes to the main negative on the battery loop um, and then also you've got on the positive contactor uh, it's not quite in the right place just we've moved a few things around but that goes to the main positive on the the, the battery loop. Um, you've also got the pre-charge resistor in here and the pre-charge circuit contactor. We haven't done the wiring flat because that'll just be done um, in when you, we come to it so it's not worth putting the time into bottling here just because it's easy enough. And that's mainly because fusion is a bit of a nightmare for doing yeah. wiring? Oh, it's, 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 it's not the greatest, it take, it's very time consuming so for the time it takes to do it it's just not worth it. Um, so you just visually mapped out, haven't you, to yeah. make sure there's space for each bit to get yeah, through? Yeah, exactly then... that. We know exactly where the contactors are going to be and we've got plenty of room around it for the wiring, so that's that's no problem. Cool, and then once we've probably made the first one, you'll just update the design. Yeah, exactly that. So we've got it stored for, for, for future. future ones. Yeah. Brilliant. No worries. Well, thanks, Josh. No worries. Now the batch box has been sent off to Cage Laser, I'm going to get... Oh, maybe not. I'm going to get these fitted to the car. Now these are directional, the boxes come labelled as left and right, so make sure you put them on the correct side of the car. Now some of you may have noticed when I fitted the other brakes um, that there's something quite vital missing. The metal sliders that click in here on front and rear. When we rebuilt the brakes, I threw them away. Silly, silly thinking that they came with new pads, which on a lot of makes and models they do. On the MX-5, they don't. EBC do not supply them and neither do Paget or a lot of the other ones I've looked online. They're an optional extra you need to buy. So I have to get a set of them order for front and rear and then go back to refitting these. So for the purpose of this video, you've seen how you fit them. I'm just gonna refit them off camera. It's time for our tech talk time on this episode. So behind me, I have a selection of EV batteries. We have Tesla, we have LG, we have Kaub, we have Mercedes B-Class, which are technically Tesla. So let's talk through in a bit more depth about these batteries, how they work, and what options you've got available for your EV conversion. So this drawing here is meant to be an LG module, so you can see how it is inside. Now they are a 4P3S configuration. So we're gonna go into a bit more depth as the 4P3S parallel and series configuration pretty much copies over to most other batteries. They're gonna be in some sort of parallel, some sort of series. So what does 4P mean? So four in parallel means they've taken four cells, in the case of the LG pouch cells, which have, I've drawn as these long cylinders here. Um, so they've taken four of them and they've linked the positive ends of the four together and the negative ends of the four together. And that parallels those cells together. Now what that'll do is it will maintain the same voltage but it'll increase the current that you can pull out by four, basically. Uh, it also increases the amp hours in parallel. And then you can series them to increase your voltage. Now increasing your voltage in series does not increase your amp hours. 
power allow is what increases your amp hours and your current. Now, series means basically you're taking the positive from, say, cell group one, link that into the negative of cell group two, and then taking positive of cell group two, link it into the negative of cell group three. So as you can see, we then we jump up basically in nominal voltages, as I put here, by 3.65 volts, up to 7.3 volts, then up to 11 volts nominal. From our, pos from our negative side here to our positive side here. Now, let's talk about minimum maximum voltages for lithium-ion batteries in general. All the ones I have here are all going to be the same minimum maximum voltages. So we state minimum voltage as 3.2 volts. Now you can drop on most of them down to 2.8, but there is no point and you'll do damage to the battery. Nominal voltage is normally 3.6 to 3.7, depending on the manufacturer specification. And then maximum voltage, 4.2 volts. They, some of them can go slightly more, but as I said, we like to make sure we maintain the health of the battery. So zero state of charge will be 3.2 volts. 100% state of charge will be 4.2 volts. Now let's look at temperatures. Now this also copies over all the batteries I have here that we're gonna discuss. So temperature wise, minus 20 to zero. That should be limited. So you shouldn't be pulling huge amounts of power or charging at high rates at that temperature because you will do damage to the health of the battery over long term. Zero degrees to 20 degrees is okay. You're not gonna get full battery performance. You're gonna do very minimal damage if you do try and pull more performance out of it and charging is fairly okay. Um, 20 degrees to 35 degrees is optimum. It's the best temperature to be at. That's going to give you full performance and allow you to, to charge at full rate. Um, 35 to 45 degrees, you're getting a little bit warm, you're still going to get really good performance, you're still going to be able to charge, but you need to start thinking about keep getting those batteries cooler and not letting them get too hot. 45 to 60 degrees, now that should be limited, you should be doing a lot lower charging rate and you should be putting a lot less power out of them at that point. 60 degrees equals fire, it doesn't actually equal fire, I just like to scare people. Um, 60 degrees, you start to get into the risk of thermal runaway. So as you go from 60 degrees and above, there is that chance of thermal runaway. And yes, the thermal runaway does equal fire, which is why I have a battery management system and why on all of our battery packs, we do liquid cooling. So we can always maintain the temperature and keep it well below 60 degrees. Yeah, fire, run, just don't go over 60 degrees on lithium ion batteries. No matter what you do, just don't go over it. The specifications will say that people can go more, just there's no point in messing around with it. Stay safe don't go over 60 degrees, basically. Um, now, let's have a quick look at some of the other batteries we've got here. And we'll lie all these out together so you can compare sizes and I can talk through each battery type weights and those sort of things. So looking at the other batteries I've got led out here, obviously I have Tesla modules. <laughs> um, we've got the 6.3 kilowatt hour modules found in the 100 kilowatt hour Teslas. We've got the 5.3 kilowatt hour Tesla module as found in the 90s, the 85s, etc. Now, form factor wise, they're visually very, very similar. They mount in the same way. They both have coolant ins inputs and outputs on them, and they're both a 6S configuration. The difference is one has a considerable amount more cells than the other. The 6.3 has 516 cells, the 5.3 has 444. They also did another module the same size, I think, that had less cells, which is in the 60 kilowatt hour Teslas, but they're years old, and you've very rarely come across them now. Um, these are known as the best in the market, most power dense. I then have the Kalb battery. Now this is a brand new battery that we buy in from Kalb and the module shape. It's the same size dimensions as the LG battery, um, but it's a 3P 4S configuration rather than a 4S 3P configuration. And not, last but not least, we also have the Mercedes B-Class Tesla modules here on the end. Now they're very similar to the Tesla modules. They're three kilowatt hours. They're an odd form factor, but they're a 7S configuration. So for some builds, having that little bit additional voltage per module is really useful when it comes to things like solar storage, um, RVs, G-Wizzes. They fit really well in a G-Wiz. Um, now the reason we went with the LG modules in our build is mainly because they're new. We've got well over a thousand of them coming into stock very soon, so supply is really, really good on them. Um, and they're very easy to work with just the four bolt holes, whereas the Tesla ones can be quite difficult because you have to mount them and suspend them from these side rails. And they're quite delicate, the Tesla ones. You've got to be extremely careful on the tops and bottoms and when you're mounting and working with it, you don't damage any of the small fuse wires. Now, thanks for watching. 
I hope I taught you something and I didn't get things too wrong, but I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. Please come back for the next episode and this will be going out as a full tech talk on the channel where I'm gonna go into a lot more depth on these batteries. So keep an eye out for that.